and thanks for joining us. Today, I have the extreme pleasure to be able to speak to Cicely Belblain out in Vancouver, British Columbia, about uh, uh, their contribution to the Africanthology uh, perspectives of Black Canadian poets book that's coming out in February of 2022. So welcome and thanks for joining me, Cicely. Thanks for having me. Well, that's awesome. And uh, we know that uh, that you've been uh, very busy lately. Uh, you know, one of uh, one of our communities, uh, you know, up and coming uh, writers. And uh, maybe just tell us a little bit more about yourself and, and your artistic journey to this point. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, my debut book, Burning Sugar, came out in September 2020. And um, yeah, I've, I've been you know a writer in, in different ways for a while. I used to write a column for Daily Extra, um, one of Canada's biggest LGBTQ magazines. Um, I'm also the editorial director of Ripple of Change magazine, which is a, a sort of activist focused um, uh, magazine that, that we started up last year as well. And yeah, Burning Sugar is kind of my um, my debut sort of poetry um, work. And yeah, lots of poured lots of my heart into it. And, and yeah, it's been it's been great to kind of come come onto this to the scene of, of other black writers and queer writers as well. And yeah, that's kind of that's me. So, I mean, so much of your experience is tied up uh, in your in your gender identity, as well as, uh, you know, in your identity uh, in terms of your ethnocultural background. And I know that, you know, you've been active as well in the Vancouver area as part of the Black Lives Matter movement there. Um, maybe I know that some of this is going to be coming up in terms of what you're actually contributing to the book itself. So maybe go into a little bit more detail about what you're going to be contributing in terms of your essay and your poem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm really passionate about talking about, you know, the intersections of Blackness and, and queerness and uh, non-binary identities as well. Um, you know, my experience as a Black non-binary person is pretty, you know, sort of specific and, and different from, from other folks. And that's something I really want to bring light to. I don't think there's a lot of content, especially from a Canadian perspective that talks about, um, you know, queer and non-binary black experiences and, and mixed race black experiences as well. So that's something that I really want to talk about in, in my piece and, and kind of explore sort of the histories of, of gender diversity and, and gender non-conformity, especially from, you know, an, an ancestral perspective. Many of our ancestors, you know, celebrated and um, expressed gender very differently and in, in it and in a much more sort of expansive and fluid way than we're able to now as a result of, you know, colonialism and, and the way that white supremacy sort of uh, creates and, and um, is very focused on the gender binary. So yeah, that's what I'm excited to to kind of explore the possibilities of, of gender expression and gender diversity within within the black community. Mm. So it would it would seem to me just from this quick uh, bit of info from you that this is something that is definitely out there and, and we need to be shining more of, of a light on on that aspect of, of the black Canadian experience. And so, you know, with you joining uh, us in the and you know the rest of the contributors as part of this project, shining a light on all kinds of different aspects of 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 our experience as a community. Like, why do you think that this kind of a project is 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 an important one to launch into now? Is given this particular moment in in our history as a, as a country and as as a black community. Yeah, I mean, I think over the past year, you know, after the murder of George Floyd, that really ignited. Um, a lot of conversation, a lot of attention to racism in this country in, in ways that I think conversations were not able to happen before, but it's very easy for things to end there, right? It's very easy for, for things to just be conversations and nothing more. And so I think for, you know, especially from an archival perspective as well, us writing things down, us writing down our experiences, both poetically and, you know, academically and, and all the other ways that, that our writers are you know, contributing not only to this piece, but to the, you know, Canadian literary scene more broadly, I think that's just so important for future generations as well to have this legacy of, you know, we wrote down 
our experiences of, of this time that we're living in. And I think for non-Black audiences, I hope that it also provides, um, you know, tangible ideas of how they can continue in solidarity with, with our community so that it goes beyond just conversation and, you know, it, it becomes, um, yeah, a more, a more central piece of our, of our um, Canadian political, you know, conversations, because I think one of the, you know, I, I'm originally from the UK and one, one of the things I find, especially in Canada, is the inability to talk openly about race, especially anti-Black racism, um, because people just don't have the language. People people see it as a taboo or, or are fearful of the, of the conversation. So, I, yeah, I hope with, with a text like this, we can demystify some of the experiences um, and also help Black Canadians see themselves represented as well. Absolutely. And but pulling that all together, putting that out into the book, putting that out into the universe gives us an opportunity to really honor that full diversity of, of what the Black experience in Canada has been to date. And, mm -hmm. and give, I think it also gives us, as you're saying, that kind of archival footing so that future generations can look back and say, okay, in the third decade of the 21st century, this is where we were and this is what was going on and this is how we were evolving. So mm. I, I'm also very excited to see what you and all the other contributors uh, to the book are gonna bring. And, uh, and that book is coming very, very soon to a bookstore, physical or virtual near you, Africanthology Perspectives of Black Canadian Poets is being published by Renaissance Press and will be on bookshelves in February of 2022. I have had the pleasure of talking about that project with Cicely Bell Blaine, based out of Vancouver, BC. Thanks so much for joining us today, Cicely. Thanks for having me. All right, and be blessed. <laughs>